Hey, I'm Randy. I'm the Chief Audio Man. Today we're talking about the ELAC Debut B 6.2s. Not the B6s. That's the older one. B6.2s. Okay? So thanks for watching me on YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe. We're building a, a fun little community here. We're not snobs, but we, we do have a good time. So grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and let's talk about the ELAC Debut B 6.2s. All right, so I was excited to get these in. Now, I have had these in previously, um, and I was unimpressed. I ended up returning them. But a lot of people commented about how they sound, and I just didn't hear that. So I found a deal on them, and I wanted to bring them in basically for a closer look, deeper dive, if you will. They're dirty. So they are a six and a half inch woofer. And the reason why I do that is because actually between surround, well, from foam to foam, it's actually about five and a half inches. I think the six and a half measurement comes from this beveled edge to where it gets flat. And that is six and a half inches. It's okay. I guess other people do that too. Does it really make a difference? I don't know. Not really. It also has a uh, one inch uh, soft dome tweeter covered by a grill. I always like that they covered them up by a grill. Some people will say that it messes with the sound. And while it probably does, sorry, it keeps, uh, keeps little fingers from poking them. And instead of this, then they do this. I guarantee you that affects the sound. Let's get into soundstage and imaging. Okay, wherever my eye may roam, Metallica. Uh, at the beginning of that song, I use that to test soundstage. Um, at the beginning of the song, there is some drums off to the right-hand side. Like, uh, I think they're even bongo drums. Anyway, this did, if not the best job of that, maybe with the exception of the debut reference, it sounded like it was coming out of the right wall. And not like just right of the speaker. I mean like way right and way deep. Okay? There's going to be another theme coming with deepness on these. Higher Love by Steve Woodward. It's a very, very good audiophile song. There are drums at the beginning of that. And there are speakers that do a good job of separation. And when I listened to that song this time, I started noticing, well, number one, they were well separated, which is awesome. Number two, there was definitive layering to where the different instruments were at as far as one being in front of the other. And I had not heard that up until listening to these speakers. So the soundstage depth is very very accurate and if if not the most accurate I have ever heard on a speaker uh, American Baby by the Dave Matthews band again a different experience for that song because while a lot of speakers center image well I've never heard a speaker not only center image but then start to put put people instruments in positions behind that center image and while I never noticed this going extraordinarily deep and when I say deep I mean beyond the wall uh, better than any other speaker what this speaker did better than any other speaker was providing um, the focal point the the vocalist or whomever is the most forward on a recording and then putting the instruments and people in behind it. And it was pretty outstanding. Pretty outstanding. Okay, we did that, we did that. Oh, another audiophile recording. More Human Than Human by White Zombie. The beginning of that song, if you're familiar with it, actually they had to cut the beginning of that song for the radio because there's some suggestive noises coming from a female uh, performer. 
anyway, um, there is these little, I don't know, electronic music sounds and they go between the right and left speaker to the point where I could almost, it's almost like watching Pong, you know, when you're a kid and you had the Atari. I remember the Atari 2600. It was a big deal back then in the eighties. Anyway, it was literally, I could almost see it going back and forth. And again, never had experienced that with any other speaker. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing for the 6.2s. Let's talk about bass. All right, initially I was unimpressed with the bass. And I think that's because the first generation was a bit bumped, or if not a bit, maybe a lot bumped on the low end. It's very, very thick and meaty. Another commenter uh, mentioned that I like, it, I like it to be a little thick. And I do, I like it to be a little thick. Anyway, I didn't feel like these were thick, okay? I wasn't happy with these, and I think that's why I sent them back originally. And I do a lot of my testing in the near field, which means about three, four feet away from the speaker. And then I also do some listening farther away. And this time, when I sat back farther away and I got them fairly close to the wall, probably I, I had them towed in slightly so there wasn't like a direct line measurement to the wall, but probably about six inches at an angle from the wall. And I sat back. And I turned it up a bit and not a lot. I'm, I'm talking about, you know, 70 high, you know, mid 70s, 73, 76 dB. The bass came in. It came in very nice, very uh, balanced with the rest of the song. And it wasn't until, and I'll get to that in the final thoughts, but for me, the bass wasn't balanced and pleasing. When I say pleasing, I mean it just sounds like what you would hear the band sound like if you're listening to them live. Um, just accurate, I guess. So for me, the bass wasn't really accurate until I got a little bit further away and I turned up the volume a little bit more. And I'll get to that in the final thoughts too. But it's fast, it's accurate as far as tonally accurate. I don't think it's uh, level accurate until you get some distance between you and the speaker and, and get a little bit more power going through them. Let's talk about mid-range. Uh, mid-range is nice. Uh, it, mid-range is actually pretty, I wouldn't say thick, but it's, it's not thin for sure. Uh, the guitar on... Um, that's a Metallica. I wrote acronyms so I didn't have to write as much. I don't know. It's a Metallica song. Sad but true. It's SBT. That's what SBT means, sad but true. Okay. So I like to listen to the guitar to see how much um, visceral nature it has. That part. When I hear the and it I hear it, but I also start to feel it. That's when it's good. They did it. They did it very well. Very well. Uh, Redemption song, Bob Marley. Um, I absolutely, my jaw dropped the floor when I heard that song through the Emotiva Air Mode of B1+. So, because of that, it is now in my test track um, playlist. Which, incidentally... If you want to hear my test track playlist, sign up for a free trial of Amazon Music HD Unlimited. Uh, I'll have a link. Click on the link. Scroll down to the bottom. Click Try HD. You get three months for free, I think. You at least get one month. I'm pretty sure you get three months. And then I get a dollar if you sign up for a free trial. You don't even have to pay for it. Cancel it after 86 days. Anyway, I... I will share out that playlist if you're interested, and you can listen to what I listen to when I test speakers. Um, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, Redemption Song made it into the playlist. That song on these, well, not as maybe emotionally stirring as which was when I listened to it through the uh, Emotivas, Air Motive, B1 Pluses, 
it was still very good and very present and in, in, in the nuanced and in, in hearing even movements of instruments was all very there um, very impressive hello by Adele um, brilliant and accurate and in the room so I wrote down um, sometimes on that song um, if the speaker doesn't uh, mid-range well in the upper registers uh, Adele's voice will sound veiled at the beginning until that song comes. It picks up. That's a dynamic song. However, on, on well done upper mid ranged speakers, uh, the voice sounds very clear and present, although slightly recessed, but that's how it was recorded. And these speakers did that very well. And then Higher Love by Steve Winwood. At the beginning, uh, there's a bunch of percussion going on, and there is a part in, in that beginning where they are hitting the drumsticks on the rim of the snare drum and really accurate really accurate and just mm, sounded like someone was in my room hitting the rim of a snare drum with a drumstick let's talk about trouble All right, treble on these has a very nice decay. They're rated up to 35,000 hertz, okay? And the first generation was rated at the same, but I did not hear the treble presence nearly as much as I hear on these. This speaker, way more well-balanced than the first gen. Doesn't mean the first gen isn't fun, it's a blast, but this speaker is more of a, what I would consider an audiophile speaker because the treble levels are very very much present at lower volumes nice decay and accuracy on sad but true um, these can be a bit bright in the near field when you, you're not pumping a lot of um, you're not pumping a lot of power through them but I'll get to that in the final thoughts uh, piano on another way to die by Jack Black and Alicia Keys um, there's a it's a higher piano ding, ding, coming out of the left speaker uh, initially that's very good now it doesn't do that as well as the Emotiva Airmotive B1 pluses you got a folded ribbon tweeter on that one though um, but it was still well done on these mm-hmm 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 mm -hmm. so on the Airmotive B1 pluses that that piano sounded like it was coming from the room on these it sounded very well done coming through a speaker okay Last more set on the MTV Unplugged album. Uh, there, she does a cover of "King of Pain" by Sting. There's a part in that song initially where she can get shebland like that. Not on these speakers. They did it really well. Okay. What are my final thoughts? I didn't like these at first, the first time, and I sent them back. I didn't like these at first, the first time, this time. But I, I got to know them a little bit, and I broke them in all night long, and have been listening to them for days, running some lower frequencies through them just to get that woo woofer moving, just to see if I didn't break them in properly the first time. And they still, to me, in the near field, sound exactly like the first pair that I had. But, when I sat back, when I turned up the volume a little bit, the light came on for me with these speakers. So, the first generation sound staged laterally and vertically like nothing I'd ever heard before. This speaker sound stages forward and aft, that's a Navy term, better than any speaker I have ever heard at any price range. The, the way that it can layer up from a horizontal, not a, yeah, yeah, I guess it would be horizontal. Yeah, that's vertical, horizontal. Yeah, horizontal from forward to the back 
And this this speaker is much more forward than the first speaker. I test that with Hurt by Johnny Cash. Because if, if the speaker's really forward, Johnny seems like he's right in your face. More balanced speaker. He's a little step back. He's still recorded forward. Um, but anyway. These also play much louder than the B5.2s. Which, um, I, I have those in house too. Because I got the, sent those by accident. I really like that speaker. And I think that speaker is actually sounds better in the near field at lower levels than this speaker however when you get some distance between you and the speakers and you bring up the power a little bit this one is much better than the 5.2s so it's different use cases there yeah i think the b5.2 actually seems bassier at lower volumes but anyway uh redemption song already talked about that Felt that the bass fell a little bit short. Yes, felt that. About 85, uh, about 75 dB, they really come together. And that's a little bit different than the first one. The first one, you had to turn it up to bring up the treble. This one, you have to turn it up to bring up the bass. It's very different. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Uh, opposite. All right, I already talked about that. So, I think in the near field, there's better options for you they're going to sound more well balanced. If you're running a sub, yeah, you can run these in the near field. But where I think these live is front channels for a home theater in a large room, medium to large room. No problem. These these guys play loud. They're actually 1 dB more efficient than the smaller ones. So they play louder at the same amount of power i mean not significantly louder but they do play louder um i think you can get away with these in a pure two channel setup if your listening is done at seven feet or greater and i think the the standout magic x factor of this speaker particularly is when you can get a little bit further away from it and then that depth of sound stage and the accuracy of where everyone is placed and the different instruments are placed that comes alive okay so these speakers are extremely well balanced um, with the exception of the bass at lower volumes near field they're a way more audiophile ish speaker and, and that's a moving target right how do you even how do you even define what audiophile speaker is is it a flat frequency is that what it is maybe well, I've heard flat frequency speakers and, you know, the measurements look the same and then the speaker sounds completely different from the other one. So it's a moving target, right? I think this speaker, I see no bumps in the bass, mids, or treble uh, when played at about 70, north of 70 dB and you're, you know, five, six feet. If you're closer up at lower volumes, I feel like the bass is anemic and rolled off. Okay? So, fantastic speaker, and it does have an X factor, for sure. It, you just have to be in the right use case scenario to really actualize the X factor. So, very good speaker. 250 bucks right now on sale. I think that's really worth it if you're going to be listening to these, if you're putting them as front channels, if you're putting them in a dedicated two-channel system and you can get a little little distance between yourself and them, standouts, truly standout speakers, and I would highly recommend them in that use case. So with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Thanks for watching.